Good evening. Welcome to the 2018 Toronto International Film Festival, day two. Is everyone having fun so far? Good. My name is Michael Lerman. I'm the primetime programmer here, and welcome to the world premiere of Homecoming. To begin with, we'd like to acknowledge that tonight's screening is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, sorry, um, and the Huron-Wendat. Um, and we are incredibly thankful to be hosted by this community. I also want to remind you that this show and every show in primetime is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award. All you have to do is go to tiff.net slash vote and vote that way. Um, and also, before I go any further, I want to thank the immense participation of Amazon Studios, who's been amazing and making this happen tonight. Can I get a round of applause for them? How many people here are a fan of the podcast Homecoming? Yeah. How many people here are fans of the show Mr. Robot? <laughs> so, to me, kind of the beauty of doing the primetime program is that there's so many people involved in making an episodic, and we get to celebrate amazing collaboration. And so it is with great, great pleasure that I bring to the stage now creators and showrunners Eli Horowitz and Micah Bloomberg and director Sam Esmail. <laughs> Hey guys, um, I just want to, real quick before we start, I just wanted to thank Tiff um, and thank Toronto, uh, home of uh, Stefan James. Six side. Did I do that right, Stefan? All right, um, anyway, so I just wanted to thank you guys for letting us screen the show. This is the first time the show's been out to the public, so thank you for letting us do this. Yeah, we want to thank Amazon and UCP for being such incredible partners, and it's really incredible. We started with this podcast, writing it in a tiny room, and now we're here, so it's really amazing, this incredible cast. It's such an honor. Thank you guys so much. And so we're showing the first four episodes tonight, the first four of ten. There will be credits in between them, so don't freak out, don't leave, just stay cool. <laughs> and think about what you've seen and think about what you want to happen next and it'll probably happen. Um, and then afterwards, we have an insane amount of cast here, of our amazing cast. There'll be a Q and A. So please stick around. Thanks guys. What'd you guys think? <laughs> All right, well, I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Sam Esmail. All right. You guys want to talk about this? <laughs> okay, so should I should I do it? You got some people with you? Do you guys do you guys want to talk to Julia Roberts? <laughs> Julia back there. Julia. JR. There she is. Julia, come on out. So, great. All right, what about Toronto's oh, Stefan James? Six side. All right, what about what about you guys like Shameless? What about Jeremy Allen White? Lip. All right. There's a little trivia. Uh, in the in the scene that you saw in this last episode, um, when uh, Shea Wiggum playing Carrasco walks through the halls of Geist, there's this great cue that we used from this film called Carrie, directed by Brian De Palma. And that starred Sissy Spacek. <laughs> 
I mean, this is Sissy Spacek, guys. This is Sissy Spacek. <laughs> okay, um, so one of my favorite movies growing up was My Best Friend's Wedding, right? It's one of the best... It's one of the best romantic comedies ever made. And so, in a role reversal, this is Dermot Mulroney pining away for Julia Roberts. And uh, let's, and this wouldn't have happened without the two creators of the podcast and showrunners, Eli Horowitz and Micah Bloomberg. <laughs> All right, let's sit. Let's sit. Let's talk. So I think I, I just want to start kind of basically, you know. It's amazing as an adaptation. It's amazing kind of bringing this to the screen um, because the podcast is so full of life and so vivid in character anyway. Um, so I wanted to ask kind of the three of you, but really for everyone, what was the process of that? What's the process of writing something different? What's the process of reinterpreting a character that already exists in some vocal form? Um, and I, I guess each of you can answer through your own respective jobs on the show. Here, 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 hold on. He can do it all. <laughs> we were just thinking about it as a podcast. We never imagined any of this or even something much smaller or less ridiculous than this. So we really committed ourselves to that form, and we're trying to tell a story that would work in that form. So when we had a chance to do this, it was really just like taking the shackles off. There were so many more opportunities, and so it was just preserving what hopefully worked about the podcast, but then introducing all these amazing performances, introducing Sam's amazing eye. So it wasn't really a challenge. It felt more like um, a freeing and an expansion of our toolbox in a way. Did, and then for the actors, did you, when you were preparing, did you kind of go through the podcast? Did you keep free of it and just stick to the script? What, were you, what, what was your process there? Is this one more? Yeah, yes it is. Yeah. Um, I stayed away from it. I, I probably would have listened to it um, if this role hadn't come around like in about a week or so. And then I, I held off because I didn't want a, another actor's kind of voice in my head. But I should listen to it now because it's supposed to be very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I too have to confess I did not hear the podcast. Unlike my unprepared cast members, I <laughs> listen to the podcast. <laughs> Toronto. You know, I thought the I thought the podcast was um, I thought it was great. It was brilliant for me to uh, to sort of get a sense of the world we were about to get into, and and um, you know, hear the nuances and and some of the voices that helped add um, layers and colors for me. That uh, was very very helpful. So I loved it. Damn, I wish I hadn't heard that podcast. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to ask Sam, you know, in approaching this, the kind of difference with, or I, I didn't mean to cut you off, either, if either of you want, had an answer to it. Sissy, Julia? I, I didn't listen to the podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, truth the truth is coming out. Um, Not it, to brag, but I listened to it before it came out. You really won that one. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I just wanted to pretend not to brag. Um, I wanted to ask you in terms of interpreting it visually, but also I, the tone you bring to it. I was, you know, I was thinking kind of the difference with Mr. Robot is there's more of this noir space to it. Mr. Robot has noir tropes, but it, but it is in this techno vibe feel of, the, of this age. Um, but part of that is the music. And you already mentioned a little bit that this cue from uh, another great piece of work, but uh, can you tell us more about the process with the music? 
Okay. Um, well, I, I knew early on that I wanted, because when I listened to the podcast, and this is something actually Julia and I remember talking about, is that it did have that sort of old school Hitchcockian vibe to it. Um, because it was a thriller about characters and about people and about their interactions and the secrets they're keeping from each other. And um, it wasn't this sort of, I think nowadays thrillers are basically action movies with some dramatic bits in between, in between weird set pieces. And, um, and so because of that old Hitchcockian vibe, I wanted, and music to me, you know, for Mr. Rob, I've, I've said this before, it is the heartbeat of tone. And did I just, okay. <laughs> um, I didn't want to have a composer ape what was already established to me, like what was gonna be resonant to speak to that tone. I really wanted to just go to the masters, like Michael Small or Pino Donaggio or Bernard Herrmann or um, uh, you know any of those great composers and license those cues. And that was like something I thought of in the in the very beginning. And as the actors can attest, I would sometimes play that music while we were shooting the scenes because I thought that there was you just they were so unique and distinct that I didn't want to recreate it or ape it in any way. Um, and then I, I wanted to ask Julia and Stefan. It's interesting because so much of it is, and so much of your work is larger than life in a way, and Bobby's doing this massive thing and all these things, but so much of your characters are so internal and, and, and the emotion is kind of held back and that brings the mystery to it. Um, what was your preparation, especially together in your scenes together? We aren't at liberty to share that. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I guess uh, the last thing I want to ask is, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to ask Sissy what drew you to this project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Sam, Julia, and, and the scripts. But I just want to say, guys, I'm stunned by what I just saw. It was so emotional and so beautifully directed and so beautifully acted. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just very grateful to be a part of this. And so what did you ask me? I, I, I asked you what drew you to the project. I, I, I was thinking, you know, you have this such a great body of work and so many interesting things that you've done and you continue to make interesting choices and this is one of them, so. And this is one of them. Go figure. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thrilled to be a part of something so incredible. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Julia. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Um, I'll open it up to the audience. Does anybody have any questions? I'm sure there are some. I'll start right here. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, So uh, the question for the rest of the audience was, was there a line or a scene that drew you in and said, wow, this is a really good show. I have to be part of this. I mean, I would say the Titanic rising scene. When I, <laughs> when I, when I read that for the first time, I was literally laughing through it. And so I knew it was going to be a special, a special moment. But, and this is my first time seeing this, by the way, and it came out great. So good job, Sam. I'd like to say one of our comrades is not here, Shay Wiggum, and he is just unbelievable in this show, and the glasses and the sweating, it, it's so good, and him trying to sit in that chair is, uh, that's the stuff actors' dreams are made of, so that, um, that for me. With much respect, I have to agree with Julia, Shay Wiggum is, oh my, it's every little... He keeps the scene alive with every little detail and care. He's brilliant. He's just brilliant. Uh, 
uh, right here in the center. So the, the question was about the, the thought process behind using the 30 minute structure for a drama. Um, well, the podcast is for 30 minutes, so it's really easy to for her if we kept the length the same. And so that made our work less hard. We didn't have to come up with more <laughs> scenes. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think if you want more, then like, it's like there's a magician phrase about, leave them wanting more. That's right. <laughs> I'm looking at the top. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> well, do you want to share anything? I can, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here for you, Julia. Um, I don't know. Maybe some of our writers have spent some time on the couch. I'm sorry. The, the, the question was, did we consult with a psychiatrist when we wrote the show? Yeah. Um, we, d uh, we had some consultants and advisors uh, in the writing process, and we talked to like medical specialists, and we did research about PTSD treatment, and we read some memoirs and stuff like that. But there was no, I think, like single therapist or psychiatrist who we based the character on. Sure, I just want to in the room up here on the aisle. So the question was, is there anybody in the below the line talent that you'd like to recognize? Uh, I mean, all of them. Honestly, 30 years in the business, and this gang were the best in the game. I would say our beloved Mango. Our Dolly. <laughs> so our Dolly grip. So here's, a, here's one thing you should know about me. I, I basically hate Steadicam. Uh, I think it's a terrible, terrible tool. Um, <laughs> But then that makes the dolly grips job really, really hard because I also want to do crazy shots that usually would be better on a steady cam. Um, and we had this insane, amazing, talented, brilliant dolly grip, uh, John, John Meng, but we call him Mango. And um, so I, we definitely have to give a shout out to him because he was sweating basically every day. That reminds me, there, there's something unusual about the set too, right? You had built this massive set for it? Yeah, so the entire, uh, I should also. Yeah, he was building, he was sweating out of camera. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my amazing production designer, who also is my production designer, Mr. Robot, uh, Anastasia White. And she built this incredible two-story uh, <laughs> facility uh, that, that and keeps going. Oh, there we go. Uh, that serves as the uh, facility. And she, it's lit. The, hello? Okay. Um, and, and honestly, one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted to do that was, again, to go back to my prior comment about doing these kind of insane camera moves was really only possible if we could build the set. And she really built it to detail. I mean, if you know, normally if you go on the sound stage and you go on the set, you open the door, there's not really a room there. You know what I mean? It's like a little piece of corner. No, she had to build every single room in this two-story set. So she did, a, she did an amazing job. Beyond that, there was even, if you saw the vending machine sort of flashing in one shot, essentially, um, that vending machine is filled with only identical popcorn and identical raisins. And inside the bags, there's raisins and popcorn and their branded Geist group, the parent company. So no one will ever know, but now you'll know and you can just <laughs> let that Except, except 1,200 people. Yeah, don't tell anyone else, but when you watch it, just kind of smile knowingly and don't tell anyone. Down here.
so the question was, we've only seen four out of the 10, but what do you think people will come away from this with? Or I, I guess, what are you hoping people will come away from this with? You guys up there? Here, I'll, I'll start by saying, honestly, and this goes back to my earlier comment about the podcast, which is, you know, obviously it's a it's a mystery and it's a thriller, and there 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 are going to be questions, and and hopefully, what you know, by the end of the series, we'll have answered all those questions. And but the, but what I hope is that really at the end of the day, this is about people, and this is about how they relate to one another, and how they connect with one another, and how they disconnect with one another. And God, this keeps happening. Oh, there, this is the hand. Okay, here we go. Um, but at the end of the day, I, 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 I want it to be about two people connecting. There you go. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. For us, the show is about, this season is completely about Walter and Heidi and these two people who are in an impossible situation who kind of find each other. And I think as the season continues, it's just about where that relationship goes and kind of what's necessary to do to show someone you care about them and to try to help them. So you said this season, is there room to continue in some fashion? Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that. yeah, is there anybody? We can't see you. Wave, wave, wave your hand. I, I think I see someone. Is there someone over there? Okay, whoever is in the middle, go for it. Shout out. Oh, good God. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's everywhere. We're everywhere. Yeah, go for it. Go, go for it. So, so the question was about the different staircases in each episode and the other, you know, radical production design elements. Uh, I'm sorry. This is not going to be a fun answer. I, I just love stairs. <laughs> so yeah, I guess, okay. Uh, right here. So we had to create an app to get in, so we knew where we were going. We knew where we were going. We had clear intentions. <laughs> I think I can speak for the group on that. Yeah. yeah. And we know what you guys don't know. <laughs> Julia, just wait. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. You're going to say, I'm named after her. Yeah, panic. <laughs> Look at your t-shirt. I'm in love with you. That's incredible. What a good human you are. What? <laughs> well, get on up here. Where are the stairs? <laughs> Sam, where are your stairs? Come on up. Come on up. I'm coming to you. There are no stairs. Okay. <laughs> we'll take another question while this is happening. <laughs> um, can we go there? Yeah.
I think we can take a couple more. <laughs> um, I, w I was going right there. So the, the question is, what is next for Mike and Eli after this podcast and the show? We're all available for work, you guys. Yes. <laughs> we plan to have conversations about that. Um, well, there is going to be another season of this, which about which we will not go any further at the moment. But So that's what's next in the immediate future. There's but a spin-off. And, the sp and there's going to be Anthony exclamation point, <laughs> which is... <laughs> going to be, we've got a seven season yeah, order, right. so, you know, we kind of got to get going on that. But uh, we would like to do more podcasts eventually, but uh, we're, we're excited about this world for the moment. And I'll take one last one right there, because that's who I was aiming for before. Yeah, you. So what's the one piece of advice you have for a young, expi aspiring actor? Wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> and know your lines. Save your money. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still taking advice, so I'm just listening to, to you guys. <laughs> Show up to work on time. I learned that from Julia. Don't take advice from actors. <laughs> All right, well, November 2nd, is that correct? Yeah, November 2nd on Amazon. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming and for being here.